Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how we can build a max heap from a given integer array. The procedure is popularly known as heapify operation. I have taken an example array with nine elements that you can see at the bottom of the screen. The corresponding almost complete binary tree representation is also visible. Now, this is an arbitrary array and definitely not a heap. We are going to build a heap in place using this heapify operation. Let's see how we can do that. We are going to apply the adjust operation that we have understood in the last tutorial for building this heapify operation. Trivially, a tree with only one node is always a heap. That is, we can always think a heap tree rooted at any leaf, isn't it? So you see that at index 9, which is a leaf, we can consider a max heap tree rooted at index 9. Same for other leaves. Therefore, for any almost complete binary tree, all leaves can be considered as a heap root. We can find leaves up to index n divided by 2 plus 1 for any almost complete binary tree. As you can see for this example, n is 9, that's the total number of elements, and n divided by 2 is 4.5. We'll take the floor value, that means 4 plus 1 is 5. So n by 2 plus 1 is 5. So all nodes up to index 5 are leaves and they are obviously heap, trivially. So now from index n divided by 2 up to index 1, we cannot say that a heap is rooted at these indices. Uh, however, for index 4, you can see that a heap is maintained at uh, its left child at index 8 and also at its right child that is at index 9 because they are leaves. So we just can make a call to the adjust operation to adjust index 4 so that a max heap is maintained at index 4. Earlier, when we understood this adjust operation, we saw that adjust operation adjust a particular index if its left child is a heap and if its right child is a heap, then the adjust operation can make the index a heap. So on calling the adjust, it will make a heap at index 4. Now we have max heap maintained at index 4. Now the heapify operation just starts adjusting the nodes so that each of them is a heap starting from index n divided by 2 up to index 1. So heapify executes a loop as you can see starting from i equals n by 2 and goes up to 1. On each iteration it reduces i by 1 and calls the adjust operation for index i. So for i equals 4 it adjusted uh, the heap at index 4. Now we reduce i by 1 in the next iteration and we go at index 3. So for i equals 3, here also the left child is index 6 and the right child is index 7 and they are both a max heap. So we call the adjust operation and the index 3 is adjusted as max heap. We reduce i by 1 in the next iteration and we have i equals 2 this time. This time again we see that heap is maintained at index 4 and 5 the left and the right child of index 2 respectively. So we call the adjust for index 2 and adjust uh, restores the max heap at index 2. Finally, we deduce i to index 1 and we see that we have adjusted heap, a max heap at index 2 and 3 already. So calling the adjust for index 1 makes the whole tree rooted at index 1 as a max heap. So this is how the heapify works. Okay, let's now go ahead and find out the worst case complexity of this heapify operation. We can always find out a positive integer k such that the total number of elements in the heap n can be expressed in this way, n less than equals 2 to the power k. Now, let me give you an example. Say the total number of elements in the heap that we have taken for our understanding of the heapify is 9, right? So we can always write 9 less than equals 2 to the power 4. We'll always find an integer something like this for any number n, right? So for this 9, we have uh, k as 4. If you have total number of elements, say, as 25, then you can write it in this way, 25 less than equals 2 to the power 5, right? And that is 32, actually. So for any positive integer n, we can find a, another positive integer k, such that we can write n less than equals 2 to the power k. So now since this is almost complete binary tree, so I have just leveled each layer there. As you can see, this is layer one, this is layer two or level two. And at each level i, you can have two to the power i minus one nodes, right? Because at level one, you can see that it's two to the power 
1 minus 1, that's 2 to the power 0, that means 1 node. So at level 2, you're having 2 to the power 2 minus 1, that's 2 to the power 1, that's 2 nodes. So in this way, at level k, you'll have 2 to the power k minus 1 nodes. So at each level i, there are 2 to the power i minus 1 nodes. Okay, so now in the worst case, you may have nodes here, right? You can have nodes here in the worst case. Now for all the nodes here at this level, that's k minus 1. Um, I have told you that if k is the value 4, then we have these four layers there, right? For 9 integers. If you have 15 numbers, you can represent in four layers. That's actually uh, the thing that I tried to express here, right? Okay. So we have these login layers in, strictly speaking, we can use the term login. So k is actually order of login, right? Because we can have the height of the tree as login. So here at layer four, we are not going to have any comparisons because all of these nodes at layer four are going to be leaps and they are hip. So at layer three, how many comparisons we are going to perform? There are two to the power, three minus one nodes and for each of them you're going to perform one comparisons because you may have leaves under them right at one layer so you're going to perform four minus three that means one comparisons for each of these two to the power three minus one nodes and here for this layer you're having two to the power two minus one nodes and you are going to perform two comparisons for each of them right one for adjusting this or this another for adjusting this or this. So it's actually going to be four minus three. I'm sorry, four minus two. And four is K, don't forget that. So for this layer, it turns out as two to the power one minus one times four minus one, because we have these four minus one, three layers underneath of this layer one. So for each layer, we are having one comparisons. So altogether, we are going to just sum up all these comparisons, right? This one, this one, and this one. So if we have k layers, in general, we can we can say that we are going to have 2 to the power i minus 1 for any layer i, and k minus i number of comparisons for each node. So there are 2 to the power i minus 1 nodes, and we have k minus i levels below that. So we need to sum up this starting from 1 up to k, that's log n. So now if we practically do the mathematics here to find out the sum, it turns out as less than equals 2 times n. So that's the total number of operations that you do for your hippify. And so it turns out as big O of n because it's less than equals 2 times n. So the hippify operation takes linear time. That means if you are having, say, n elements in your array in order to build the heap from that array in place, it's going to take order of n times. Worst case complexity is big O of n. So that's amazing, right? So in the next tutorial, we are going to understand the hip sort. So we have finally done understanding the hip. We have learned everything on about hip. We have learned how to insert an element into the hip, how to build a hip using hipify, how to delete an element from the hip, how to adjust the hip. So now we are all set to learn the hip sort algorithm. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to start hip sort. Thank you for watching this.